Welcome. Um, I'm Robin bender -Ginn, Executive Director of the OpenJS Foundation. I know most of you here, many of you here. Um, and if you don't know, I'm hit, hitting like three and a half years as Executive Director, which is really, time has really flown, right? Because the merger was about a year before, so you all have been with me from the beginning. So um, let's get started. Um, so just want to remind everybody about our code of conduct. If you see something, say something, grab me, grab an event person. Uh, we'll take care of it right away. But of course, we want everyone to feel welcome and included. We have some new folks today. I like to remind folks to remember the Pac-Man rule. If you know what a Pac-Man looks like, always leave a little space open for someone new to walk up and join us. Because some of us, it is our first, first time here. Um, so yeah, this is a, a really cool thing I think that we're doing by hosting the OpenJS Foundation under the Linux Foundation umbrella. Um, of course, this was sort of a transition year where we're like, okay, COVID's over, economic downturn, uh, what are we going to do? But you know, we uh, are so much a part um, of so many different projects, uh, companies, so I really encourage you to take a look um, at what else is out there at the Open Source Summit. But of course, you know, I'm super biased. We have an amazing program committee. Some of you are seated here. So we've really built um, a really great uh, event for you. So um, if you don't have Sketch loaded on your uh, phone, you can download the latest version. Uh, make sure you uh, find all of these great tracks uh, that you can save and go support your friends and my friends. So we have uh, about two and a half days of full content. Uh, what do we have Thursday? We have Joe's Jamboree on there, which we were like, well, how do we describe that? It's really a social track, a hallway track in a room where we're going to figure out where to go next for our after event hours. So make sure you swing on by. If not, uh, find one of us. Um, and of course, some great content on Friday. Um, and before we jump in, I just want to sort of flag some of our current social channels. We have been growing. Thank you to Kylie for driving all that great content there. Um, but uh, we're posting on LinkedIn and Mastodon. Uh, we're just getting our Blue Sky invites. Don't have them yet for the foundation, but, but we're really growing. And uh, so if you're tweeting great things, if you want to retweet, either tag us or uh, find us, and we'll, we'd love to amplify that. Um, so here's a slide that I think I've used probably for every time I talk um, because, you know, it's big, right? And this is just the web. 1.9 million websites, 98% uh, using JavaScript. And, you know, it's been around for 27 years now, um, and it's just used everywhere. But, you know, people always ask, is it relevant, really, to emerging technologies today? So, you know, I was thinking about what am I going to talk about, and sometimes I sort of whinge with my other executive directors who are working on these bright, shiny things. Um, and they, t you know, and I was reading this article in the New York Times about AI and the race for AI, and it described the industry racing to win the next big thing. Um, and so, when you do look at some of the other foundations at the LF, you see them forming under these new kind of next big things. And they may be trying to define a standard spec, or they're really competing for market share. So, and then when you look at JavaScript, well, hey, we have market share. You know, hey, we're standardized. You know, and continuing to grow and move forward. So, where does that put us? Kind of in that next big thing. You know, and there's battles underway with technology, the AI race, the cloud competition, the battle to own the metaverse. So I started thinking, you know, how is JavaScript uh, used in some of these areas, and how critical are you? Um, so you think about how, of course, JavaScript's an AI. We, you know, build the front-end interfaces for uh, web-based UI apps. Think about projects that we love, like TensorFlow.js. Uh, it's used for uh, interactive data visualizations that help developers understand some of these AI, AI models. And of course, you're seeing JavaScript li uh, libraries used to perform NLP tasks. So again, uh, JavaScript is an AI there and other places. 
Uh, obviously, JavaScript has been in the cloud for, you know, probably since the beginning, obviously. Uh, and you'll see, you know, in a number of areas, uh, working with functions that execute in serverless environments. You, it's used in containerization. As you know, it, you know Node.js makes it easier to deploy apps to the cloud. Um, and of course, Node.js is a great choice for building APIs. And looking at the metaverse, again, that's sort of one of the latest and greatest uh, foundations at the Linux Foundation. Um, and you'll see JavaScript there as well. It adds interactivity to virtual objects in the metaverse. Uh, it's used to build the UI for the metaverse apps. And of course, you know, chatbots are everywhere these days, and you can probably build a chatbot with a lot of JavaScript. So, so you know, when you think about JavaScript, I sort of think about, where's Dan? There's Dan, or he ran out. What you had said in New York at our FinTech event, that JavaScript is a powerful force multiplier. You may not think or know all of these small JavaScript uh, projects that we all work on, but believe me, your developers know. Um, and they may not be core to some CIO's business when he thinks about some of these big key scenarios, but your developers know. Um, and also, one of my things that I've always sort of carried with me all of the time, my boss, Jean Pelly, always told me, one, one plus one equals three, where the power of being together is bigger than the power, uh, is bigger than being apart. So JavaScript, nope, it's, it's not a race at OpenJS, kind of slow and steady wins the race. Uh, we uh, believe in developer choice. Everybody has their favorite project framework. You know, I get asked all the times, hey, what about that new thing? And hey, what about that thing? And what does Node think about this? And, you know, so-and-so think about that. And I'm like, it's all good. You know, we support each other. We, uh, we, you know, we innovate with each other. Uh, we uh, build new projects using uh, folks and contributors from the projects that we already have and love. Um, so uh, that's sort of our message that no, it's, it's not a race. Um, and standardization, of course, is very important and that ensures that um, everybody wins. So let me give you uh, just a step back and give you a brief overview of our projects. Uh, we host 41 today, we've been growing, um, and we have projects Appium, Dojo, jQuery, Node, Webpack, uh, so many, Jest just joined, um, and the projects have really, really grown over time. We also op uh, welcome the open visualization projects, uh, VizGL um, and others, WebGL projects under the Urban Computing Foundation last year, and have a really uh, robust um, working group out of that as well. So, you know, yesterday Darcy asked in our collaborator summit, hey, anyone remember what our mission is? <laughs> you know? So I kind of thought I'd throw this slide in here. Like, none of us could really right, recite it word for word, um, but really kind of the, the core element is that we are there for the end-to-end -end JavaScript ecosystem. Yes, we love our projects, but so much of what we do um, is to help um, the broader ecosystem. Um, and you'll see that as we talk more about some of these scenarios. But first, I wanted to share our big you know, news today. Uh, Jim, you know, Zemlin over at the Linux Foundation, kind of spoiler alert with us, but Meta joined um, at the OpenJS Foundation. So we're pretty excited about that. You know, they are heavy users, obviously, of JavaScript. They've created many of your favorite JavaScript projects, React, Jest, um, and others, Flow, for example. Uh, so we're super excited by the support that they've shown. They've been just super awesome to work with on the Jest project. Um, and there is a blog today that describes uh, more about uh, some of the great work that's happening at the Meta Open Source team. So really grateful for their support um, and excited to welcome them as a gold member. Um, so, you know, when you think about our projects, um, a lot of them are run by sort of small teams. I and mean, there's a lot of um, other projects across the universe that are sort of run by kind of companies and businesses. We still have, we have some, we have some of that, probably not as much as others. Um, and what's really cool is that it's run by these small teams 
that really believe in a strong kind of open governance project, uh, process. Um, and the way we operate is each project has a strong voice and their technical steering committees control the direction of their projects. Um, and then at the Cross Project Council, many of you participate, Giuseppe's the chair. Um, we look for areas of commonalities and we'll work together on those things. So from security to standards to, you know, to code of conduct to um, other governance models. Um, we believe in radical transparency. Most of our meetings are stri uh, streamed live on YouTube. Um, and we invite all, if you just want to check it out, you can maybe check it out on our YouTube channel to see what it's like. You're welcome just to join and listen and meet the people and kind of the process behind it. Or you're welcome just to jump right in and just start doing things. So uh, you're welcome anytime. Um, well, it's hard to put together a, a win slide, boy, because we, you know, our projects are shipping constantly. Um, but I've just picked a few, and it might be easier if I come down and read, but I almost have them by heart, or I might put you on the spot. Node, of course, has been really um, crushing it with, you know, 19 and 20 releases, really doing a lot more in security, which we'll talk about. Um, and then it was super exciting last year on the Grace Hopper Hackathon. Um, I think I mentioned we were expecting 50 to 75 uh, women and non-binary folks to show up. We had 300 women sign up in the first 24 hours and had a shutdown registration. So that was pretty cool and had some great uh, first PRs there. Uh, WebDriver, Christian's here, um, had a big version 8 release, really proud of that. Um, and really doing some really innovative work in translations. So if you want to learn more about translations, Christian's doing some cool stuff. jQuery also with the Alpha Omega funding. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and some of this research that's underway with, with IDC, a research firm. Um, Electron, still a fan favorite, just celebrated 10 years, uh, which is amazing, and version 24 shipped. So a lot of great work happening there. They are the, like probably the most reliable uh, shipping deadline. They meet their deadlines. Not that slipping's bad, but they have a well-oiled machine. Um, ES Lint, I love. It's a great place for new contributors. Uh, they have new versions released quite frequently. Um, and a fabulous new website where they brought in a lot of new contributors as well. So that was pretty fun to see. So I'm gonna kind of pop back up. Um, some of you may have seen this before as well. And we, you know, we talk about all of the great code and contributions that happen, but there's a lot more to a successful open source project than code. Um, I know I started working on the Node project from the early beginning, and it was not about code, it was about community, marketing, governance, um, and that really sort of helped build my career. So whatever, as you know, folks have mentioned this morning, whatever your superpower is um, and whatever your interest is, maybe you code too much and you're kind of bored coding, but you want to do something else, you're welcome to do that too. Um, but there are a complex set of activities to really make a project uh, shine. Um, our goal really at the foundation collectively is to really kind of remove any friction outside of coding to help your project grow. Um, and then we do so, a lot of support for our projects. Some of it that you may, you know, may surprise you, particularly sort of in the legal compliance, um, export control. Um, we have a, a wonderful staff uh, from program management to legal to finance. We help manage the money behind the projects. But um, we have like, you know, if I think about you know, our finances and things like that. We probably have 100 infrastructure costs every month that we pay bills on. And if you think about a project, um, having to sort of manage that and coming in and coming out. So we really sort of prioritize, like, what can we do uh, to make that easier? Um, and we're also trying to make it a little bit more efficient moving forward. Um, other areas that we're working on making more efficient for end users are around trademarks and things like that. We had a board meeting yesterday. How can we make our trademark policies more user friendly so it doesn't have to be sort of this ad hoc, oh, I'm not sure if that's right or what have you. So we'll be working on some of those things with the community going forward. So I think as you all know, security has really uh, been um, a focal point for us um, and everyone's just working tirelessly to make that happen. Um, a lot of this work um, is happening under the uh, 
cross project council uh, security collaboration space. And we call our working groups collaboration spaces for the most part. Um, and everything we do, we sort of, it really is sort of funneled there and often goes off to the CPC. Um, and so we've really taken some ambitious uh, security goals this year. So let me give you a quick highlight. Um, so if you think about, um, I had talked about um, OpenSSF and Alpha Omega. And Alpha Omega is under the OpenSSF, but it's an independent entity funded by Microsoft and Google. Um, AWS is kicking in as well. Um, and what they have done is identified the most critical open source projects in the ecosystem, Project Alpha. Um, and obviously JavaScript, if you look at any sort of uh, criticality score or Harvard census study, JavaScript is probably one through 50 almost on those criticality scores. Um, so that's Project Alpha. Omega is sort of the long tail where the, um, uh, the team is going to be working on tooling. So we applied early on and got the Node.js grant, the first grant for OpenSSF Project Alpha Omega. Um, and brought in some resources to help that team. That resource reports essentially to the TSC um, and providing that direct support. So I'll talk a little bit more about sort of some of their learnings there, but that's been really um, successful um, and we've had a lot of interest in that. Um, the jQuery project is interesting. It's really, it's almost like, I mean, I think people call it, it's gonna be almost like a consumer campaign for end users. So think about the mom and pop small, medium business kind of uh, people who have websites in the world that are not secure. 77% um, of the world's websites are using jQuery still. And a lot of those are on version one. Version 3.6 or eight should kind of be where you are. Um, and you look at things like, um, for example, WordPress didn't start shipping current versions of jQuery until 2021. So if you think, let's go back and you've got a, a pretty vulnerable market. So, um, so some exciting work happening there. I'll talk in a little bit more detail. And then I think how many of you read the news about the Sovereign Tech Fund um, last week? Um, and I think we have another slide on that, on some details. So let me just pop on up. So uh, the funding on, on jQuery, um, a lot of it has gone through uh, for infrastructure as well. Again, when you take a, a, a project that is you know, a legacy project, it's about 15, 16 years old, um, there is a lot of sort of patchwork quilt kind of infrastructure things. We've been working with the team actually for the past three years, um, but you know, now we really have resources to really sort of bring on and accelerate how we how we sort of decouple some of these areas and reduce the surface area for attack. Um, so doing a lot of migration um, and updating in those places. Now the other interesting piece of the jQuery project is sort of reaching the end users. Um, and that we've hired IDC. If you may know Al Gillen, who's an analyst at IDC, he's sort of uh, well known for their uh, open source ecosystem research. So the jQuery maintainers and our team worked with um, Al and his researchers. He has one uh, in security, one in DevSecOps. Um, really workshop a really interesting um, survey instrument tool. It's going out in five countries, um, US, Canada, UK, Germany, France. It'll be translated. And really sort of understanding kind of the, you know, the, the threat vectors uh, for folks who have websites and what would sort of inspire them to um, upgrade or move off. Ideally, I think we probably want a lot of people to move off jQuery if they have the in, you know, capability, then obviously to upgrade. Um, but one of our maintainers built a jQuery detection tool. We'll go public with that when the campaign goes out. Um, and it's fascinating when you start popping in some of your favorite websites to see big global websites are in version one and you're like, wow. So um, you'll be seeing some, the research should be done um, probably at the end of this month and then that campaign will roll out, so stay tuned. Okay, the Sovereign Tech Fund, uh, super exciting, super ambitious. This really was an excellent, I think I mentioned yesterday, an example of really working just completely, you know, in tandem with Giuseppe and that security cloud space. We essentially wrote this 20 page proposal together, worked with the Linux Foundation IT department 
Um, it's two years, and we got it. And so it's great. And our, our goal is to really execute. We're really good at execution at OpenJS. Um, and so if you think about what we're actually going to deliver, half of it is infrastructure work, much like we have been doing with jQuery over time, although doing a single scalable uh, build and release um, sort of model and IT plan for our projects. So we're going to be doing briefings with all of our projects, um, in, doing an inventory of all their infrastructure needs. Um, and we have two new full-time people working at Linux Foundation IT department. Ben on our team, Sternthal, is uh, going to PM that. Um, and so hopefully we'll be uh, making everything easier for y your build teams. I know some there are some big dependencies on folks and some big stressors. Um, and also, you know, just us constantly, it's like a, a whack-a-mole sometimes on getting sponsorships for some of these, to, you know, build teams as well. So working more broadly with the LF on uh, bringing a little sanity to that and a little modernization um, and a lot of GitHub actions probably. Um, the other piece, I'm just going to pop on down, is, is that sort of security program. And this is where we really need your help. Um, there, it's going to be in a few components. Um, I don't know. I saw Amir earlier, but a, one, we're going to offer audits for some of our projects through the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund. If you've heard of OSTIF, um, you can check them out. They're sort of a, a sister organization at the Linux Foundation. Um, and so we'll be, you know, working with the CPC and talking to the projects and see who might be interested. We're budgeted for about two big ones or four or five smaller ones. Um, and so we'll take a look at that on the audit. Um, through our sort of inventory and analysis of projects, we're going to take a look at projects that may need to, to be sunset at various stages, whether completely locked down or just need more transparency on the status and maybe some extra support on some yearly security updates. So really taking a look at all 41 of our projects. And of course, we do have some that have sort of reached the end of their life cycle or some of our maintainers have moved on to other things and they've been um, uh, lonely, let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, and then we're also going to be taking, a, a big chunk of it is taking the work that the Open Source Security Foundation Best Practices Working Group is doing and funneling that through OpenJS and developing customized solutions um, and a roadmap for JavaScript broadly. Um, so if, you, um, if you're going to follow another Slack channel, OpenSSF, and, that's, and that best practices is a good one to follow. Um, if you have folks you work with or if you're interested in learning more about security um, and, and bringing that sort of JavaScript lens, because we will be probably the first kind of real, wor real world implementers of some of those best practices. Um, so take a look at that. Um, additionally, we're going to be doing uh, some new security training. Um, working with Clyde and the Linux Foundation training and certification team. So we're talking to a number of folks who could help bring that sort of subject matter expertise to us and sort of what direction we want to take. So it's a lot of exciting work. Um, and one of the cool things is with the Sovereign Tech Fund um, is that they are just, um, they're very passionate about this space and so much so that they're uh, joining our board of directors, which is very cool as a platinum member. Okay, um, let's see, so Node.js, I think those are probably our most popular monthly blogs. We have this wonderful rhythm right now with Raphael um, and the team um, and the Node project, Michael Dawson, others who review all of our content, Mateo, um, and there's just so much great work happening that really is sort of putting the the project, I think, on more security oriented is what I'm hearing. I think before it was very reactive to issues um, by, by, by having sort of some extra resources and getting some policies um, in place is helping them be a little more proactive. So I think there's probably some sessions on that later today. But if not, yeah, pick, you know, find Michael or some other folks from the Node project. But, um, but what I think is super exciting is sort of the first point, um, and we've seen that this is probably the, what the second year, this work is really opening the door to new contributors, and that's really exciting. Um, so 
you know, sustainability is really important, and um, so we love to see new people jumping in. So, you know, I talked a little bit about, you know, sort of our growth, um, and, you know, we are a member-supported organization, and what's really been interesting to see is we've been, you know, sort of slow and steady, even during some really weird times at COVID, but we doubled the number of our uh, silver members in the last year. And really, you know, other than this recent sort of security influx, it's really our members who sort of make, uh, make it happen by providing the financial support, support and real active um, involvement in our governance process. Um, we added end user um, representation to the board um, a couple of years ago through a bylaw change. Alex at Netflix was there, now we have um, some folks at NodeSource. We've been seeing a lot of financial uh, verticals come into our organization. Um, and so it's been, you know, it's been really uh, wonderful to see some of the other location places that you've seen, like Uber and others. So it's been, um, it, you know, it's really helped, um, it, it's helped us provide more programs, and then it's also provided more representation on our board, which has been great. And in case you did miss it, on Monday, we did announce our new uh, slate of board of directors. Um, and so individually, I think, I, I saw on Twitter like, wow, what a great group of people. So pretty amazing. Um, but for me, which was, which was really extra special to see the diversity. Uh, when I was hired three and a half years ago, we had zero women on our board. Um, and I think my board gave me a 30 to 50% goal for diversity. I'm like, how am I ever going to do that? Well, it wasn't me that did that. It was you all that did that by being allies, actively recruiting. I can count of a number of uh, folks around here who actively recruited women to our community um, and then just made this place a really cool place to, to participate. So I really want to sort of thank everybody for making that happen. So it can happen. Um, I want to talk more about training, and uh, this is something that actually started back in 2016 at, was it in Austin, at a Node Interactive in Austin, or maybe it was Vancouver, but there were some meetings after the Collab Summit, and folks said that we should have a training. Uh, they, you know, the community worked on it sort of from the bottoms up, um, and then moved into the Linux Foundation training and training team, who really professionalized it with some of our subject matter experts. Um, and now we're really, ex you know, excited to see it, its longevity, its growth. Um, it's now translated in Chinese. Um, it's being updated constantly with new releases. We'll have our next um, next refresh in September. Dave Clements, who you may know from Node Cookbook, is our subject matter expert. So, um, and then the cool thing is today there is a 60% off sale. So if you haven't done it unless you already know some of the questions and you were on the committee, you can't do it, but <laughs> feel free to sign up. Okay, um, this is sort of one of my favorite parts. This is our awards program. I think Jim said in his keynote this morning that we gave the awards. Well, not quite yet. We've given some hints to some folks. Uh, let's see. So we have a program called JavaScript Land. Yeah, it was very fun to put together. We talked about buying our own piece of an island or something so we could have the JS you know, domain. And I found out you have to have, what, uh, a real government, I think, to do that. I guess our CPCs. <laughs> I don't think our CPC counted. It should have counted, but it was a lot of fun developing the JavaScript Landia. If you haven't joined, uh, you can hit that QR code. And you can. we do a lot of digital badges. Think about them as virtual stickers. You can kind of put them wherever. You can do the JS Landia. You can do your own favorite. Uh, open source projects. Um, but now I get to dive into the awards. And again, the first five couldn't travel to Vancouver. So, so I just want to share their stories, though. I don't know if anyone's dialing in virtually. So if so, um, big applause. But our first recipient is uh, Rafael Gonzaga, our Pathfinder for Security. Um, and we had nominations so many nominations. We had a, it was a hard time for the committee, so I just want to read what uh, the nomination for Raphael. Uh, Raphael has made significant contributions to the Alpha Omega project, jointly with the OpenJS Foundation and the OpenSSF, 
and he received very positive feedback on his efforts to improve the Node.js security ecosystem. His contributions to reports and blogs have generated great visibility from social media, and he has personally trained and brought engineers to the security working group to build the community towards self-sufficiency. So, Rafael. Okay, next up, Brian Cardell, who is our Pathfinder for standards. Uh, Brian at Agalia has been instrumental in bringing web developers into standards throughout his career. He has an abiding interest in bettering the future web. Um, he's been super dedicated in the past year to math ML and bringing more features to the web platform. So congratulations, Brian. <laughs> Next up, our Pathfinder for Education, uh, Eric Wendell. Eric has done a lot of work to promote Node.js to developers. Eric has done over 115 conference presentations and talks around the world. Uh, he helps developers learn about Node.js. So he's done everything from YouTube video. Uh, he has a, a really popular channel that covers advanced JavaScript to his courses on Node.js streams to his recent experiments on building the Node.js runtime from scratch to engage developers in a fun way. So congratulations, Eric. Mm -hmm. Our next is our unsung hero, Richard Lau. Uh, Richard has been consistently doing an amazing job taking care of the infrastructure that powers the Node.js project, while also contributing both to the TSC and the release working group. His dedication is an inspiration to all collaborators. That is the truth. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our next is our Leading by Example Award is Danielle Adams. Uh, Danielle volunteers her time as a Node.js releaser and TSC member. She is smart, reliable, and always positive in the large undertaking of a Node.js release. She also educates the industry on the Node.js release cycles to better prepare developers around the world. She's presented at NodeConf EU um, on the life and times of a Node release, um, in addition to the OpenJS and finance. Uh, she's been a champion for the underrepresented communities. Uh, last year, she was one of our top leaders on our Grace Hopper uh, Open Source Day Hackathon and mentoring women and non-binary developers on their first successful PRs to the Node.js project. Congratulations, Danielle. Um, I think we have one person in the room on our next award. Is our best contribution from a new arrival, Claudio Wonder. Uh, you, Claudio, yay. So Claudio has made significant contributions to the Node.js website and plans to improve the project's documentation generation to help generate metadata needed for the TypeScript ecosystem. But uh, those projects, uh, these projects are complex, requiring working with many project members, getting buy-in, and doing consistent work. His enthusiasm and determination to move things forward is great to see. Claudio has ramped up and con contributed in record time. Congratulations, Claudio. Yay. There you go. Trying to get your pick. Great. So fun. Not to mention, he does a crazy time zone that he somehow never seems to complain about. I know. So congratulations to everyone. Um, congratulations to everyone who helps uh, make our foundation great every year. And... That is it for our OpenJS update for this year. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah.